hurting and broken within, overwhelmed by the weight of your sin, Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for the drink from the well? Jesus is calling. We come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness is bought with precious blood of Jesus Christ. Leave behind your debts and mistakes. And today there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows and trade them joy from the ashes of new life born. Jesus is coming. Now come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness is bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Who oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness is bought with the precious blood of Jesus
by the Spirit of God. Then raise Christ from the dead. And now the poor stand and confess that my portions of
My friends, let us join together in prayer. Everlasting Father, today we come to you in this season of preparation, Lord. In this season of expectation. Lord, anoint our hearts, anoint our minds, allow us to focus upon you, disinfect our thoughts, allow us to be thinking purely about your spirit, Lord. As we move into the holiday seasons, as we move into a time of great joy, a time of thanksgiving, a time of, of, of everlasting peace, help us ultimately to find joys in the small things, the stockings, the chocolates, the relationships, the conversations we have with each other. Lord, in all these things, may we find the spirit of your hope. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. My friends, you may now be seated. And we have a very special video today. It was sent to the church. We have no idea what the video is. We'll just have to roll it and see. You may be wondering, what is this fiendishly handsome fellow doing in your very intelligent pastor's office? Well, here's a surprise. I'm taking over. Yes, I'm taking over! <laughs> to be honest, I'm sensing too much joy and happiness. It's radiating out. It's torture. You torture me with your joy and laughter. That's enough! It's enough! It's too cold. It's too yuck outside. Cheer up, dude. It's Christmas. No! No! Never! I come to you today once again to ask for your help. Help me to show all these people why Christmas is so lame. Join me Wednesdays at 7 p.m. for Matt Raleigh's The Heart That Grew Three Sizes. It's radical, bro. It's extreme. It's super duper. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, to be honest, it's a book study. But it's going to be extreme and fun. Where, 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 where? Here, at my church. The Church of the Grinch. Okay, it's not called that yet, but it will be. Join me, Wednesday, 7 p.m. Be there. If you're not, I will find you. I do not know who sent that video, don't know who made it, just arrived at the church, but nonetheless, uh, Wednesday, 7 p.m., it should be a good, fun time, my friends. With that being said, I would like to welcome Joshua and Jennifer up for our Advent wreath lighting. that hope 
exists within each and every single one of our hearts. For the hope that Jesus Christ brought into this world is remembered and honored on this day. Our world offers many places where to find hope. Today, we choose Jesus. Jesus is where we find our hope. My friends, let us listen to the words of Scripture. With some technical difficulties, we will now listen to the words of Scripture. (laughs) Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 24. It states this. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, did God really say that you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it, or you will die. You will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, She took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God. But the Lord God called to the man, saying, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that commanded you, that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, the woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit of the tree, and I ate it. Then the Lord God said, what is this that you have done? And the woman said, the serpent deceived me, and so I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. For you will crawl in your belly, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. But to the woman, he said, I will make your pains in childbearing very severe. With labor, you will give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband. He will rule over you. To Adam, he said, because you listened to your wife and ate fruit from the tree, from which I commanded you not to eat from, cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil, you will eat food from it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of the brow, you will eat your food until you return it to the ground, since from it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you will return. Adam named his wife Eve, because she would become the mother of all the living. So the Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife. And the Lord God said, the man has has now become one of us, knowing good and evil. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take from the tree of life, but then he would live forever. And so the Lord God banished him from the Garden of Eden to work the ground from which he had taken. After the man was drove out, he placed on the east side of the Garden of Eden cherubim and a flaming sword flashing back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life. This is the word of God for the people of God. Long scripture, long scripture. In fact, it is the entire third chapter of Genesis. But before we get started today, I want us to take account of where we are at scripturally in the garden, at the very beginning, at the very beginning of creation. Act one, innocence. 
twisting tales to alleviate and abbreviate our lessons for when our attentions fail. Remembering to remember when the memories lead to frosted trails. Stories to the light with implications that fright. May we know the darkest night only by illumination of divine light. Welcome to your life. Once upon a time, there was a boy named Manuel. Well, Manuel lived with his father on a great big Christmas farm. There, he helped his father take care of the farm, keeping all of the animals in order. Well, Manuel was a super bright and very creative kiddo who absolutely loved Christmas ornaments. How many of us here love Christmas ornaments? I know as a kid, I adored Christmas ornaments. Well, this boy absolutely adored Christmas ornaments, and this father, he might as well have been named Father Christmas, because this father had this Christmas farm decked out with so many decorations, thousands and thousands of beautiful lights, enough to make Clark Griswold proud. He had the whole inflatable Christmas kit with Santa Claus, with all nine reindeer, with Frosty the Snowman, New York Police Detective John McClane, all the real Christmas characters. Y'all know what I'm saying? <laughs> the father even had the farm lined with candy canes and a path that wrapped all throughout the property. The path featured all kinds of twists and turns, and if you followed it, and if you looked closely, you could see in the distance the other workers that Manuel's father had hired. All incredibly great singers, men and women of many different faces, you could say. Well, at the farm, perhaps the only feature not decorated was a lone tree in the backyard. Not a Christmas tree, just an old, basic, boring tree. Now, the father, he didn't decorate this tree. Old man said he didn't need to. Didn't have a ton of lights. It had to have been there forever, though, because no one could remember a time in which it wasn't. However, interestingly, all the animals of the farm seemed to flock around this basic, old, rugged tree, like moth to a flame. Well, one day, Manuel noticed some very special decorations going up in the middle of his yard. And these decorations, they were a little bit hidden. They were a little bit hard to find. But my goodness, these decorations, they were very, very, very shiny. And Manuel liked shiny things. One decoration stood out the most. It was a shiny Christmas bulb. Kind of looked like this one. And Manuel was immediately drawn to this bulb. For when Manuel looked at this bulb from a distance, he swore he could see a reflection of himself within. Out of childlike curiosity, Manuel asked his father. He said, can I go? Can I go hold the ornament? Can I go examine it more closely? But his father told him, no, no, no. Manuel just wasn't ready. One day, maybe Manuel will understand. But right now, Manuel, well, he just wasn't ready. Nevertheless, the boy became obsessed with the bulb. What was the father hiding? Was the bulb magic? Why could he see himself, or at least his reflection, in the bulb? And why would his father not let him hold the bulb? That's not fair, Manuel thought. That's not fair. Well, a few days later, the boy, he, he's sitting in his room, staring out at the Christmas bulb in the tree in the middle of his yard. And he's sitting, staring out, looking, fixating, fantasizing about this bulb, thinking about it. And that's when he heard a whisper. A whisper. An odd but calming and alluring whisper coming from his wall. Hey, bro, did 
Did you see that super shiny, magical ornament that your father got for that amazing, super spectacular, slick and shiny tree? Man, it's so cool. It's dope. It's the bee's knees. It's funky fresh. Jeepers creepers, it's magic if you can dig it. I saw on TikTok that only the truly awesome and strong people can hold it, I guess. So you're probably not strong enough to hold it, said the mouse. Manuel recognized the voice of that mouse, for it was the resident mouse of the house. He went by many names. Manuel knew him as his cool Uncle Winslow, who lived in the walls. Some would call him Lucy Morningstar. Others would refer to him as Old Scratch. Rumor has it he was a lawyer of some type, perhaps worked with the IRS and bank bailouts, a uh, big passion for long walks on Earth. We could go on and on. But with this encouragement from the voice of the mouse in the wall, Manuel decided, you know what? I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go for it. And I'm just going to go outside. I'm just going to go take a look at it. Nothing wrong with looking. And as he ran out into the yard, Manuel, he felt the thrill of excitement, the thrill of freedom, the thrill of true choice. Arriving at the shiny tree, he noticed the odd beauty of the tree. Shiny ornaments everywhere, flashing lights. The tree looked both large in stature and small in width. As the tree was covered in a type of frost, and as he noticed the vines extending from the top of the tree, choking around the trunk, Manuel wondered if the tree intended to harm. But as Manuel gazed deeper into the tree, he could see so many wonderful things. Money, so much money, enough money for everyone in the world to live on. He saw people gathering together, finding community in the city square. He saw an image of a beautiful lamb being offered and given to the people. But best of all, Manuel saw his fantasy, his dream. A river flowing endlessly with the rushing waves of Hawaiian punch and gumdrop lily pads. As the fish seemed to rise to the surface as if to say hello to Manuel. That's amazing and I'm sure that will work out for everyone, Manuel thought. And so Manuel, in his innocence, in his curiosity, in his naivete, he grabs the shiny mirrored ornament and he grabs it and he holds it. Now, the first thing Manuel noticed was the absurd weight of this ornament. This Christmas ornament it was absurdly heavy. So we're talking Excalibur, Excalibur sword stuck in rock levels of weight here. So, in other words, whoever holds this ornament must be very, very strong. Okay, let me just make a quick pastoral note there. Greg is strong like Superman. But it was so heavy, and Manuel is trying to hold this weight, and as he's struggling to hold the weight, he's also noticing that it's starting to slip out. But this ornament is slippery. It's elusive. It couldn't quite be grasped like a stick of butter left on a hot stove. Every squeeze led to a slip. And as Manuel, as he just tried to wrangle this sucker in, as he tried to get a good grip on it, that's when he saw it. That's when he saw it. The most beautiful reflection of himself shining in the Christmas bulb. And as he stared deeply into this ornament, fixated on his reflection, Manuel could have sworn he heard a laugh. And that startled him. And then Manuel, he could have swore that he heard a whistle. And then all at once, it was as if the thread of time unraveled. 
The noise, the noise, it became so loud, a cataclysmic cacophony, a symphony of surreal. And Manuel hears the thunderous roars of all creation. And all at once, every click clack, every scritch scratch, every jibber jabber, flibber flabber, tibber tabber, every kind of sound to get to the heart of the matter. It was as if the pressures of the world fell upon Manuel, the weight of choice, the thorns of suffering. Flashing images of rushing water, powerful, disordered chaos with waves of potential. Primordial sludge and creatures of all kinds flooded Manuel's minds. And he hears the voices of creation. And he sees the images in his mind of nature. And everything is just getting louder and louder and heavier and louder and heavier. And Manuel, he feels the ornament slipping but it just gets louder and heavier and it's too heavy and it's too slippery and the noise, the noise, my friends, the noise is so loud. And so Manuel, he puts his hands up to alleviate the pain, but in doing so, imagine that was glass. Manuel drops the ornament and as the ornament falls to the ground, it shatters outward and billions and billions and pieces of glass are sent all around. Act two, lost. To live in choice or to die in decision, a boy lost in indecision with his vision envisioned by the reaper's sigh smeared in the blood from Cain's knife, permitted to be committed into the hands of father's strife, a window into life, a portrait of once was, a mural of sorrow, a symphony for tomorrow. Come and save us. So immediately there's just glass everywhere. Glass everywhere, and Manuel, he's afraid. He's afraid, and he feels a heaviness in his chest and in his throat, and Manuel, well, Manuel panicked. And he ran and he ran and he just freaked out. Glass is everywhere, it's everywhere, and as Manuel is running, the glasses from the broken ornament are cutting into his feet. With every step, the glass is cutting his feet into pieces. Now amidst this chaos, the father, arrives home, and he is beside himself. In tears, he calls out and he says, My son, what have you done? What is all this that you have done? Look out and see all that you have done. But the son is hiding because the son is afraid, because the son is ashamed. Everywhere the boy steps, there is glass. From the east to the west, there is glass. And so the father tells Manuel, go, go, go away from here. For I declare that paradise is lost, for today paradise has fallen. My child, what have you done? Go and run. But one day know that I will come. And so the boy fled his father's home, exiled with the glass of what could have been embedded in his foot. And from that day on, Manuel walked in pain. And from that day on, Manuel, he struggled, he toiled, and he suffered. And every time, every time Manuel tried to return home, the glass would drive deeper into his feet, his blood pouring out onto the ground testifying to the pain, of his, the pain of his existence, excuse me. Every time Manuel tried to return home, he would find that the broken glass prevented him from returning home. Over the years in desperation, Manuel, well, he got desperate. He pushed on, crawling through the dark, the sharp shards of glass, Step by step, inch by inch, Manuel would feel himself inching closer to what once was. Inching closer to paradise. Inching closer to perfection. However, as Manuel crawled, and as he moved further and further, he would find himself eventually surrounded by his reflection. His big old ugly reflection. Shining through the countless pieces of broken glass. Manuel, well, he was unable to move forward, always reminded of his mistake, always reminded 
of his shame, always reminded of his unlove for himself. Trapped by pain, bound by trauma, enslaved by his shadow. But the Father, the Father, the Father, my friends, the Father's love for his Son was much, much too great. So do you think the Father gave up on his Son? No, no. The Father did not give up on his Son. And so the Father screams from the house. He said, let the heavens declare that I will come for you, Manuel. Let the heavens declare that I will come for you, mankind. And so the father shouted from his house and said, I am not finished with you, my child. I am not done with you. Let the heavens declare with the, with the breath of existence, I will redeem all that is fallen. And I will do so, for I am the Lord of lords and the Lord of hosts. I am the God of redemption. I am the God of the lost. And I will gift you a son. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Prince of Peace, Emmanuel. And I will accomplish this, for I am the God of faith. I am the God of the real. I am the living and redeeming God of love. As your blood cries out in pain, so my lamb will pour out his blood in love. A burning star, a sign from above. And the Father said, I will come for you. My child, I will come for you. Welcome to Advent Descension where hope is found. Oh, come let us adore. 
Father divine, a mother awaits the arrival of her son, a child of promise, a harbinger of hope, a star that shines everlasting, a sign of the season, hope is near, hope is here. May the hope of Jesus Christ be with you. 